Uh, my name is Rick North. I'm a volunteer from Portland, Oregon, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Um, I, want, I worked for the American Cancer Society for 21 years, the last five as director of the Oregon Division, and seven years as project director for Physicians for Social Responsibility before I retired. I'm not a medical professional. I've just worked with them for decades. I still do as a volunteer. I always favored fluoridation because I believed authority figures like the CDC and the American Dental Association. But when I actually researched the science, I was very concerned with how many health risks were associated with it. And I was also amazed at how many scientific and health professionals were opposed to it for the same reasons. Armed with this new information, I changed my mind. And then I started reading the history, which opened my eyes even further. This is one of those stories from history, Dr. Hans Muhlenberg and how he protected public health in the Netherlands. Muhlenberg lived in Harlem, and half of his patients came from there. The other half came from Heemstead. March 1972, Amsterdam fluoridates. Heemstead goes with it, but Harlem remains unfluoridated. This is what happened. Quoting from Muhlenberg's book, the adverse health effects began almost at once, especially with children. But only in fluoridated Heemstead and the cure was easy, non-fluoridated water. This is Muhlenberg's list of harmful health effects. His estimate was one to 5% of the population. Just take a look at, take a second to look at how many problems fluoridation was causing. Migraine-like headaches, mouth ulcers, worsening of allergic complaints, stomach and intestinal pains. And of course, you know, there can be a number of other causes for these same effects. So Muhlenberg found, uh, formed a team of doctors, many of who were actually skeptical that fluoride was causing all this harm. They did a double blind study where neither the patients nor the researchers knew who was getting the fluoridated water until after the results were in, removing any possibility of bias. The results proved the harms were caused by the fluoridated water. And it wasn't just Heemstead. Several studies in the US, Detroit, Milwaukee, Passaic, New Jersey, had found the same effects. Swallowing fluoride caused harmful health effects, and removal of fluoride cured them. The Feldman study found about 1% suffered immediate harm. In a city of about a million and a half like Calgary, that would be 15,000 people. Muhlenberg now took his scientific findings nationwide. Here's what he was up against from the Ministry of Health. Quote, the experts we asked for advice do not see any grounds for changing their position regarding or favoring water fluoridation. Look what's happened here. You've got a solid scientific study backed up by other studies in the US. Real people, these are real people also, suffering real harm, being treated successfully by their real doctors just by avoiding swallowing fluoride. But they were ignored by the, quote, experts in the government. This wasn't science. This was denial of science. But Muhlenberg and his colleagues, in a tremendous struggle, carried the day. By 1975, the Netherlands had stopped fluoridation. Muhlenberg emphasized several times in his book, it wasn't just the doctors and scientists who led this fight but ordinary citizens too. This is from the Dutch Ministry of Health today. Let's look at the three main points. First, it's prohibited by law. It's banned. No city is allowed to fluoridate. Second, drinking water shouldn't be used as a vehicle for pharmaceuticals. No other drug is allowed in water in Canada or anywhere else in the world. And this is a drug as defined by Health Canada's own definition. Yet fluoride, a contaminant with a toxicity equal to lead, is given an exception. This doesn't make any sense. And finally, it conflicts with a freedom of choice, taking away your right of informed consent on what drugs you take. This goes beyond nonsensical 
it's unethical. Hans Muhlenberg went on to fight fluoridation in countries all over the world. And although, as you keep hearing, it's been called one of the top public health achievements of the 20th century, it's actually one of the most widely rejected health interventions in the world. 172 countries don't fluoridate, only 24 do, and of those, only 10 like the U.S. for more than half their population. Please stay with the vast majority of nations and cities who have wisely decided not to put this toxin in their water. And I just want to show you this. Other than my work history, everything on this PowerPoint is a matter of public record. If you knew where to look and did the research, virtually anybody in this room could have put this presentation together. It's all out there. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for the opportunity to present.